Okay, welcome to Mac with Miss B. Um, we are factoring. It says factoring trinomials, but we're factoring everything. This video is going to be one of seven or eight videos at this point um, that teaches you how to factor. So this is the introduction, but um, the whole thing is going to be all those differences. We a equals one, a is greater than one, a is negative, GCS. Perfect squares, trinomials, difference of two squares, binomials, four terms, sum and difference of cubes. Everything you want is about to be here. So let's talk about factoring all of the trinomials. Okay. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand of the places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. Factoring trinomials, prior knowledge. So what you know is, is that when you multiply, okay, um, you do this by distributing, right? So this is something you already know. I have to take you where you've been so that you can get to where we're going. That was deep. <laughs> okay, so when I multiply by distributing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do x times x, and that's gonna give me x squared. And then x times 2, that's going to give me 2x. And then 9 times x, that's going to give me 9x. And then 9 times 2, and that's going to give me 18. Once I distribute, I'm going to simplify, right? So when I simplify, that means I'm going to combine my like terms in the middle. So 2x and 9x uh, are going to give me uh, 11x. What do you notice okay so we're gonna pay attention to our original problem the nine and the two and then we're gonna pay attention to our answer the 11 and the 18 what you should be noticing is that from our original problem nine plus two equals the the number in the middle, the 11 in the middle of the answer, and then nine times two equals 18, the last number in the answer, okay? Math is about patterns, so pay attention. Let's do another one. Multiply by distributing. X times X is X squared x times negative 5 is negative 5x, 3 times x is 3x, 3 times negative 5 is negative 15. I'm going to simplify by combining my like terms in the middle, so negative 5 plus 3. In the middle, I'm going to go ahead and get negative 2x. What do you notice? Well, the same thing. Those two numbers, three and negative five, give me negative two. So when I add those two numbers, they give me what's in the middle. And when I multiply those two numbers, they give me what's in the back. Let's do it again. Multiply by distributing. X squared minus five X minus one plus five. Simplify by combining like terms. X squared minus 6x plus 5. What do you notice? Same thing, right? When I add those two numbers from my problem, I get the middle number. When I multiply those two numbers, I get the last number. This little fun fact is what's going to help us go backwards. So I'm going to give you x squared minus 6x plus 5, and I'm going to ask you to factor it, so put it into those two groups of parentheses. That's what we're doing today. Okay, a equals 1 trinomials. You got this. All right, so when I have a trinomial and a is equal to 1, I need to find two numbers that multiply to give me c, 
and those same two numbers need to add to give me B because remember we're breaking apart a trinomial right now so M times N has to equal C and M plus N has to equal B this is what we just went over in our prior knowledge section okay so you're like that was a lot of words I got you it's fine okay so p squared minus 5p minus 14. Find two numbers that multiply to give you c and add to give you b. So c is negative 14. So I'm going to list all the factors of negative 14. 1 times 14, 2 times 7. That's it. 3 don't go into 14. 4 doesn't go into 14. 5 doesn't go into 14. 6 doesn't go into 14. 7 is already on the screen. That's how I know I've made my list. Okay? So which one can give me a negative 5 by addition or subtraction? Well, that's going to be the 2 and the 7. Okay? But the 7 has to be negative for that 5 in the middle to be negative. And one of the numbers has to be negative because when I multiply them, they need to give me a negative 14. And this combination does exactly what I want it to do. It does both. It solves the riddle. What are two numbers that multiply to give you C, that multiply to give you negative 14, and those same two numbers add to give you negative 5? That's the riddle. And once I find the combination, I take my variable, which is P in this case, and I say P plus 2, P minus 7. Bada bing, bada boom, baby. And you did it. You factored. That's it. Okay. X squared minus 7x minus 18. Um, uh, what are we going to do first? We are going to find two numbers that multiply to give me C and add to give me B. Yay. So C is negative 18. So I'm going to go down the list. 1 times what? 18, good. 2 times what? 9, good. 3 times what? 6, good. So which combination can give me a negative 7? A negative 7. 1 and 18, 1 plus 18 is 19. 18 minus 1 is, is uh, 17. That's not going to work, right? 2 plus 9 is going to give me 11. 9 minus 2 is going to give me a 7, but I need the 7 to be negative. So a negative 9 plus a positive 2 would give me a negative 7. Yay! Um, so once I do that, guess what? I double check. When I multiply 2 times negative 9, is it negative 18? 2 plus negative 9, is it negative 7? That's my answer. x plus 2, x minus 9. That's it. You did it. You're done. Hey. <laughs> Um, n squared minus n minus 56. Find two numbers that multiply to give you c and n to give you b. What is c in this case? Negative 56. Good job. <laughs> now, I'm going to list all the factors of negative 66, starting with 1. 1 times 56. Good. 2 times 28. Good. 3? Nah. 4 times 14. Good. 5? 6? No, but 7. Now, I need what number is the B value? What number is the B value? That number in the middle. So, usually students get confused when there's no number. And I'm like, I don't know. Well, it's a negative one, okay? So it's a negative one. So how can I get a negative one? Not one and 56, not two and 28, not four and 14, right? If I add or subtract those, I'm not getting a one. But seven minus eight would definitely give me a negative one. And when I multiply seven times negative eight, what am I gonna get? Negative 56. So. That's the riddle. I solved the riddle, baby. Um, ooh, try on your own. 
Okay, I'm gonna give you one minute to try this on your own. The clock is ticking. All right, we're gonna find two numbers that multiply to give me C and add to give me B. We're gonna start with a good old negative 12 because that's our C value. I'm going to list all the factors of negative 12. One times 12, two times six, three times four. And I know I'm done because there's no four times, four times three is already up there. So once I start repeating numbers, I'm Gucci. Um, that was cringy. Anyway, uh, I need to get a combination that's gonna add or subtract to give me a four. One plus 12, one minus 12, not gonna work. Two plus six, six minus two. Ooh, we might be onto something. With the two being negative, I get six minus two to give me a positive four in the middle. And when I multiply them, negative two times positive six, I'm gonna go ahead and get a negative 12. So <laughs> we did that. Um, try on your own. Uh. Oh, I definitely just burped. That was disgusting. <laughs> Okay, find two numbers that multiply to give you C and add to give you B. C, in this case, is negative 90. So we're gonna find all the factors of negative 90. Oh my goodness. One times 90, two times 45, three times 30, five, there's no four, five times 18, six times 15, seven, nope, eight, nope, nine times 10, baby. I need to get a positive one. 1 and 90, 245, 335, 18, 615. None of those is going to give me a 1. But if I take this 9 plus this 10, I get 19. But if I take this 9 minus this 10, I will get a negative 1. So maybe I'll switch the signs and I'll make the 9 negative. So 10 minus 9, and that would definitely give me a positive 1. Okay, good. Um, maybe this is the last example. I don't know. We about to find out. Oh yeah, this is the last example. D. 
that multiply to give you C and add to give you B. That number is 24. So we'll go down the list. 1 times 24, 2 times 12, 3 times 8, 4 times 6, 5 doesn't go into 24, 6 is already on the screen so I know my list is complete. Now 1 plus 24, is that going to give me a 4? 1 minus 24, 24 minus 1, no. 2 plus 12, 14. 12 minus 2 is going to give me a 10. That's not going to work. 3 times 8 is what? Uh, I mean, 3 times 8 is 24, but 3 plus 8 is going to give me 11. 11 8 minus 3 is going to give me um, a 5. That's close to 4, but not 4. 4 plus 6 is 10. 6 minus 4 is 2. Nothing is working. Oh, it's prime. Sometimes you cannot factor a trinomial. It doesn't mean you can't solve it. It just means you can't factor it. So just like the number 7 is a prime number, this trinomial, x squared minus 4x plus 24, is prime because it doesn't have any factors. That does it for this portion of the video uh, series on factoring, okay? Um, there's more. A is greater than 1 will be next. So if that's what you're looking for, stay tuned to the next video. And if uh, you know what I'm going to tell you at the end of every video, go back, do the examples without my help, see if you learned something. Okay, and then if not, I'll see you in the next one.